Hi everyone. In the last two videos, we've explored the basics of creating populations and shown you how to use the mass to constrain or limit a population to specific areas of the terrain. In this video, we'll apply that workflow to create a forest of evergreen trees that extend from the upper slopes of the mountains all the way down to the foothills above the valley floor. For this part of the video, we've added a surface layer shader with its test color parameter enabled so that we can visualize where the instantiated tree object should appear. In the 3D preview, these areas of the terrain will show up as pink. We'll begin by selecting the evergreen tree population already in our project and applying one of the masks we defined in the previous video. In the object node list, select the population node for the evergreen tree. We've already set up the population's position and scale values to match the same settings used for the terrain height field. Our forest will look more naturalistic if we reduce the spacing between the trees and if they aren't aligned in the grid-like pattern we used as an example in the previous video. Reduce the object spacing in A value to about 10 and the object spacing in B value to 15. In our project, we also increased the spacing variation values to 30, but this is higher than they need to be. The spacing variation parameter controls the randomness of the positions. At the default value of one, the position of each instance is fully random within its grid cell and the population as a whole looks fairly natural. With higher values, the objects are scattered farther away from the grid positions, in our case, over a square of 30 by 30 cells. Before we repopulate the terrain, let's also adjust the size of the trees. The 3D geometry for this evergreen tree has been modeled to scale and is about 20 meters tall. We don't want every tree to be 20 meters tall, so let's vary their scale a bit. Under the Scale tab, Set the minimum scale value to 0.33 and the maximum scale value to 1.5. When populated, each instance of the tree will be randomly scaled between 7 meters and 30 meters. Under the rotation tab, the default values of 0 degrees for the minimum Y rotation and 360 degrees for the maximum Y rotation will ensure that each instance of the tree is randomly rotated, which is precisely what we want. So we don't need to modify these values for our shot. In addition to varying the instantiated object's position, scale, and rotation, Terrigen's population feature allows you to modify each instance's diffuse color values by tinting it. Under the Color tab, the Evergreen Forest Tint node we created in Part 16 of these video tutorials has already been assigned to the Diffuse Color Tinting field, so each tree in our forest will have slightly different color values based on the shader assigned here. The last step is to assign a shader as a mask for the population, so under the Distribution tab, assign the Evergreen Upper Zone 1 shader to the Use Density Shader input. Click on the Populate Now button to repopulate the terrain with this 3D tree object. Now we can see the start of the forest taking shape. And under the Edit tab, we can see that over 1,600,000 trees have been instantiated across the terrain. To fill in this area with more trees, we'll add a second population of evergreen trees but this time choose a different tree species. Artistically, we'll choose something similar in size and color to the first tree species, because both species will be constrained to the same region. To populate the terrain with this 3D object, we'll repeat the exact same steps used for the first tree population. First, we'll position the population node by setting the area center value to negative 16,000. You can do this by typing in the values directly into the parameter inputs or you can copy and paste the values from the first population by selecting the first population in the object node list and then clicking on the copy slash paste coordinates button to the right of the desired parameter and choosing copy coordinates. Then select the second population in the object node list. Click on the copy slash paste coordinates button and choose paste coordinates. Next, we'll scale the population node by setting the area length A value and the area length B value to 58,000 meters to match the size of the terrain height field we created in part six of this video tutorial series. Since both tree species are similar in scale, we can set the second population settings to be much the same as those of the first population. You can copy and paste the values for object spacing and spacing variation from one population to the other, or enter the values directly into the input fields. Remember that the values should be close, but don't have to be exact. Under the Color tab, assign the same shader used to tint the first population to the Tint Diffuse Color parameter of the second evergreen population. This will provide similar color variation across the populations. 
Finally, assign the same shader used as a mask for the first population to the second population by either clicking on the green plus button to the right of the Use Density Shader field, then selecting Assign Shader, and choosing a shader from the list. Or in the Node Network, dragging a connecting line from the output of the masking shader to the input of the population's density shader input. Enable the Preview Color checkbox, so we'll be able to distinguish between the two tree populations that make up the forest, and then click on the Populate Now button to populate the terrain with the 3D tree objects. As you can see in this render, the forest has started to fill in with trees, but we still need a lot more of them. We'll add two more evergreen tree species to the evergreen upper zone areas using the exact same procedure. But this time we'll create an inverted version of the power fractal shader to use as their density shader mask. This technique will help to create a separation between the different groupings of trees and also fill in the as yet unpopulated areas of the terrain. Let's create the inverted version of the power fractal node first. In the node network view, select the power fractal node. Then copy and paste it by pressing control C on your keyboard and then control V. Double click on the new power fractal node to open its settings. Then give it a new name like population group B. Under the color tab, change the apply high color value to black by dragging the slider all the way to the left or entering a value of zero in the numerical input field. Change the apply low color value to white by dragging the slider all the way to the right or entering a value of one in the numerical input field. One of the advantages of duplicating the original power fractal node instead of inverting it some other way is that you can fine tune all of the new power fractal node's parameters independently of the original power fractal node. This way, you could slightly expand the range of the second noise pattern in order to allow the tree objects instantiated from it to intermingle with the tree objects from the first noise pattern along their overlapping borders. In the last video, we showed you how to combine shaders together using a merge shader, and we need to combine our new power fractal shader with the group of shaders that define the rises in the terrain. This time, we'll demonstrate the use of a function node to achieve the same result. Function nodes are simple mathematical operators that can be combined in logical ways to form more complex networks. They are extremely versatile and provide an almost infinite variety of possible combinations. Right-click in the node network and select Create Function, then Multiply, and then Multiply Scalar from the list to add a Multiply Scalar Function node to the project. Drag a connection line from the output of the Color Adjust 01 shader to the main input of the Multiply Scalar node. Then, drag a connection line from the output of the Population Group B node to the Input 2 connection of the Multiply Scalar node. Internally, the Multiply Scalar function node multiplies the values of each shader together and outputs the result. We can now assign the function node as a mask to the Evergreen Upper Zone 2 distribution shader by dragging a connection line from the output of the function node to the mask shader input of the distribution shader in the node network. Now, we're ready to add a new 3D Evergreen tree object to the project. But this time, choose a tree species that's different from the first two trees in terms of size or color. Like the other two tree populations, we can set this population settings to be much the same as the other population settings. You can copy and paste the values from one population to another, or enter the values directly into the input fields. Remember that the values should be close, but don't have to be exact. The last step is to assign the Evergreen Upper Zone 2 distribution shader to the Use Density Shader input for the population. Then press the Populate Now button. Let's add one more tree population to this zone, following the exact same steps we just took.
As you can see from this render, the four populations of evergreen trees are beginning to fill in the upper elevations of the mountains. Next, we'll focus on adding even more tree populations that start in the lower valley regions and climb up the mountains. We'll follow the exact same steps to populate this area with four different tree species. While assigning the evergreen lower zone masks to these new populations to constrain the instances to these areas. Since we're following the same procedure to populate this region as the previous examples, we'll pause the video and return when the new populations have been calculated. Here's a render of the eight populations in our project so far. In this video, we've added approximately 10 million individual evergreen trees to cover more than 3,000 square kilometers of terrain. But we're not done yet. In our next video, we'll add the deciduous trees and shrubs to fill in the lower elevations of our terrain. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. Thanks for watching.